Hello biologists! Today we're going to do the lab 1.10 microscope lab and yet learn how to use a microscope in the virtual lab. The microscope that we're going to use in the virtual lab is a compound microscope. It has two lenses, one in the eyepiece and one in the objective. We need to know the magnification of the eyepiece. That's just the eyepiece here. If you just took it off and looked at something, it would be, look 10 times bigger. So that's one part of what we need to know to answer question one. We also need to know the magnification of the objective we're using. We can only use one objective at a time. On this next slide here, I have a screenshot of what the magnification on the eyepiece, it's 10 times here as well, and on the objective in this screenshot, the magnification is 40 times on the objective. That's the high power objective. If we multiply the magnification of the eyepiece times the magnification of the objective, in this case that's 10 times 40, that equals 400. That means something appears 400 times larger than it would with a naked eye. There's a couple other important parts of the microscope we need to know about when we get to the virtual lab. The light and the stage. The stage is where you put your microscope slide. We also need to know about the focus knobs. The coarse adjustment knob is a no-no when you're using the high powered objective. It's great when, when you're using the two low power objectives, but don't use this during, with the high power objective. The fine adjustment knob should only, should, is the only knob that should be used with the high power objective, and I'll demonstrate why here in just a moment. Let's head to the virtual lab first. You'll notice first you have to click on lab 1.10, the second thing you need to do is get to slide 8 out of 10 within the lesson. And the third thing you'll need to do to get to the virtual lab is click on using a microscope virtual lab. I'll show you in just a moment, although you won't have to go to the virtual lab for this particular lesson because I'm going to show you everything. But you should know how to do it. Okay, I've moved my screen camera to the virtual lab here. I clipped 1.10 lab within the biology page. I clicked the white triangle here to slide 8 out of 10 and now I'm going to click using a microscope virtual lab. I highly recommend you view the tutorial but we're just going to begin the lab. I'll choose blue gloves, it'll load the activity, and then we'll be able to start. So this is what the virtual lab looks like. I'm going to show you a real microscope right now so you can see the difficulty in focusing the high-powered objective. I'm going to show you on a real microscope first because it's easier to see. This is the coarse objective. This is the fine objective. The coarse objective moves the, or the coarse knob moves the objective up and down very quickly. The fine objective barely moves. The fine focus knob barely moves the objective at all. You can see when you have the high power objective in place, you don't want to move that coarse focus knob because you can knock that objective to right into the slide. I have a piece of wax paper right here in the microscope right now instead of a slide so I can show you what happens. You can hear the crinkle of the wax paper. If that was a slide, the slide would break and the microscope here, this lens, would be damaged. So this is a screenshot from the lab. I didn't actually do this right now. But this is what happens in the lab if you use the coarse focus knob that knob that moves the objective really quickly, that's what happens if you use that to focus the high power objective. It'll break the slide and it'll damage the microscope. You want to use the fine focus, the knob 
that moves the objective very slowly when you have the high power objective in place. So that's the answer to number two. Let's head back to the virtual lab for number three. So I've moved my screen crammer back to the virtual lab and we're going to take the dust cover off the microscope. The dust cover, of course, is to keep dust out. You can see on the real microscope here, we want to keep dust out of here and out of the eyepiece. I'll just take the eyepiece off so you can see it. You don't want dust here because you want to see what's on your slide, not pieces of dust. So back to the PowerPoint in a screenshot. For number three, why is it important to keep a microscope covered when you're not using it? Why do you keep the dust cover on? Well, you want to keep the dust out of your slides and your lenses so that you see your specimen and not the dust. Number four, it says sketch what you observe when examining the onion root tip slide using the low power lens. If you don't want to sketch, you can simply describe what you see using a short paragraph. Use appropriate terminology as demonstrated. We'll go to the virtual lab and I'll show you how to do that. So in the virtual lab, we want to turn on the microscope. We want to adjust the diaphragm so there's more light coming through. We want to use lens paper to clean the lens. It's okay to throw the lens paper away. We want to grab the onion root tip cell and put it on the stage. Then it's okay when you have a low power objective in place, we'll make sure we have the four times objective in place to use the coarse focus knob. And if you don't have all cells underneath, you can use the stage here to move things around so you can see different parts of your specimen. And you can use the fine focus to zoom in. And what you're seeing here are cell walls cell membranes, and the nucleus. Okay, back to the PowerPoint here. Remember to use a, write a short paragraph here. Don't, and a one sentence is not a paragraph. For 4B, it says what happens to the field of view when changing from low power to high power? Do you see few? cells or more cells under high power. So here's a screenshot of what we see under low power. You can see there are about 35 or 45 cells in the field of view right now. When I go to a screenshot where we're under higher power, so the total magnification is about 400 because we're using the 40 times objective, the field of view gets smaller. With low power, we can see lots of the slide. With high power, we can see much less of the slide, but we can see more detail. When I put my screen camera in the virtual lab, you can see when I switch objectives that that's the middle power objective, the 10 times objective. We'll focus that here. You can see about 10 cells there. Remember, we could see about 40 or 50 earlier. And if we go to the highest power objective, Remember, we can only use the fine focus to focus this. We can only see one cell. So the field of view decreases quite a bit when you go from low power to high power. So the answer for 4B, what happens to the field of view, is it goes from a large field of view under low power to a smaller field of view with more detail under higher power. And that leads to the next question. Do you see more details? to the cells under low power? Or do you see more details under higher power? So let's, let's reverse that. Under higher power, do you see more details or fewer details? Let's go to the next slide. I put a screenshot of a high power. You can see that you see more details in the the cell and you can even see what we think is a mitochondria right here. You couldn't see that on the previous slide because you had so many cells in your field of view. 
you can see more detail here when you zoom in with higher power you can see that little mitochondria there. For D, what part of the cell might you be observing? Well, we already talked about this is a mitochondria, and if you don't know how to spell that and you don't know what it is, it's okay. You should know what a nucleus is from seventh grade science, and membrane and cell wall, because this is a plant cell, are also things that you're seeing. The last question on the lab is about the hay infusion. Describe what you see in the following slides. So when we go to the lab and we look at the hay infusion, what happens, what we see is a rotifer here. This is what a hay infusion looks like in real life. It's a bunch of hay and a bunch of pond water and they let it sit for about a week and lots of little microorganisms get brewing in there and it's great for looking at under the microscope because it contains things like rotifers which are these really neat little microorganisms that zoom around and eat things on a slide. There's paramecium you can see in a hay infusion. There's LJ. Those are single cells sticking together to make a filament. And there are vorticella. They're little animals that zoom around eating LJ and bacteria. And this was not taken with a light microscope. It was taken with an electron microscope. This is very, very, very tiny stuff. It's bacteria. I switched my camera now to the virtual lab so you can see how to make a hay infusion slide. We'll go in the gooey water here. Put a couple drops of the hay infusion onto a slide. Grab our forceps, take a cover slip, and make a slide. We'll have to take the onion root tips out of the way. Put them back where we found them and slide the hay infusion onto that stage. Then we want to zoom around a little bit, see if we can kind of focus in on something. We've only got the medium objective in, so we can zoom in with the coarse focus, adjust things with the fine, and we're probably seeing a rotifer here. This is a photograph of a rotifer. Remember, you can also sometimes see paramecium, you can see filamentous algae, you can see vorticella, you can see bacteria, and that's the answer for number five about hay infusion. If you want to learn more about hay infusion, you can just put in Wisconsin or WISC EDU hay infusion in the search engine and you'll pop up a very cool video with more detailed answers about hay infusion. Some versions of the lab have a question about diatoms on it. They are microscopic, single or multicellular photosynthetic organisms found in fresh and salt water. So that means the ocean and in a lake nearby you. Diatoms are an indicator of climate change because of ocean acidification. When the, acid, when the ocean is more acid, they have a harder time making their shells. Diatoms are super cool because they may be a source of oil. Let's go look at what they look like in the lab. So I switched my screen camera to the virtual lab and I'm going to grab the diatom slide here and put it under the microscope. I'll zoom around so I can, we can see things a little bit better. We'll zoom in. I, left it on the high power objective and we'll use the fine focus here to see what we can see in the diatoms. Okay, I have the scanning objective in place right now here in the virtual lab and here are some diatoms that we're looking at. I can zoom the stage around so you can see more of the diatoms. Let's focus in on this kind of pile of diatoms. We can zoom in here and look a little bit closer. They look like very, very tiny shells and that's kind of what they are. 
I think the hype.